If you're looking at buying your first welder or upgrading your old buds box, you must have heard about multi-process welders, but are they any good? Before shooting this video, I've done a lot of research on what people were asking in the comment section on welding review videos. I came up with examples that people wanted to know if a multi-process welder would work for them. As for the machine, it's the Art Captain MiG 200 6-in-1. I asked if I could put it through its paces and they agreed and sent one out. I'm not being paid by them or instructed on how to use the machine or what to say. I will give my thoughts on the ease of use and the pros and cons later in the video. For thin gauge steel you have the MIG wire choice of 0.023 or 0.030 which is 0.6mm or 0.8, typically ER70S-6. For these examples I'm using 0.030 or 0.8 and for the gas I'm using Argus Shield Light, a similar gas to 7525. I have the V-roller in the drive unit. I am welding 20 gauge steel which is 0.8mm or 0 0.030 and the spot welding hole is 3 8 diameter which is similar to 9.5mm which is a common spot weld cutter size. For the plug welding I set the voltage to 14.7 volts and the wire speed was set at 4.7 meters per minute. This machine has a spot weld timer and I had that set to 3.2 seconds. For the vertical position I should have adjusted the timer slightly longer because you can see it didn't quite finish the weld. But it's a feature I'll definitely use. For the patch panel I set the voltage to 14.7 and the wire speed was set at 4.5 metres per minute. I welded it in pulses to get the maximum penetration without backstepping or any cooling because this was to highlight the welder's ability for thin gauge welding, not distortion control. You can set the machine's spot timer function but if you have any variation in the positions or gaps it has to be adjusted. If you're looking for a multi-process welder a good feature to look for is a memory function to save each setting once you have the welder dialed in. For the clamp on the welding stand I had a 1 8 or 3 mm gap between the 3 8 10 mm plate and the square tube. So I had the machine set low at 23 volts and the wire speed was at 9 meters per minute. The slight downhill position reduced the gravity affecting the weld from falling away. For the MIG welding I didn't use synergic mode, that way I could compare it to all of the machines I've used over the 20 plus years of welding. And having a machine where you can switch between both is really cool. For the 3mm or the 8 inch square tube I used 19 volts and the wire speed was set at 6.5 meters per minute for that stack of dimes look if you're into that. The gas flow rates for all of the MIG welding was around 25 cubic feet an hour or 12 litres a minute. That's it for the MIG welding, I will be posting two videos shortly on how to convert your normal MIG gun to weld aluminium for a low buck option or why you'd consider using a spool gun if your multi-process welder has the ability. I'm making these car ramps and I'll be showing you both ways. A big bonus of a multi-process welder is you get to choose the process that best suits your project. This welding stand had a lot of threaded parts and small components that I didn't want to grind out any excess welds or clean out any threads. This machine has a TIG torch sold separately but because of the DINTS 50 I was able to use one that I had at home. To change from MIG to TIG simply cycle through to TIG, disconnect the pigtail, change the ground to positive and connect the TIG torch. The gas hose is fitted directly to the regulator and the argon flow rate is at 20 CFH or 9 litres per minute. TIG welding sheet metal was another common question so I decided it was worth including here. A lot of people questioned if you needed a high frequency start or a foot pedal to achieve good results. I'd never tried it so this is my first go. The cap looked pretty good and the penetration was there but it wasn't pretty but that doesn't mean I don't need to practice. For the clamp and the captive nuts I used 100 amps in the same 1 16th or 1.6 millimeter ER70S-6 TIG wire. To weld around the captive nuts I screwed the bolt with the handle in so I could perch my hand off that and it allowed me to rotate around the nut easily. This machine's lift TIG function is the best I've used. If your machine tends to stick I have linked my video in the description below on how to strike an arc every time. If you're wanting to learn pipe welding a multi-process welder can even do that. Here I tacked two welding test plates together that I'll be welding later in the video. This was at 140 amps and the same gas flow rate. 
I was using 332nd or 2.4mm ER70S-6. It's better to land each welding position on plate first because you have more time in each position. Then you can concentrate on the one that's giving you the most trouble. It's overhead. This machine here has what's known as a polarity switching cable, commonly called a pigtail. At the moment this welder doesn't identify with either polarity, so I'm going to be switching it over to negative for the flux core. So now it's going to be taking the negative and putting it into the Euro style fitting. I switched from the 10 pound or 5 kg roll of solid wire to a 2 pound or 1 kg roll of flux 71T-GS. I have installed the knurled roller. These help the wire drive push the wire through the mid gun without turning the wire tension down too much, deforming the hollow wire. Some multi-process welders have an inch button. This feeds the wire when changing the spool. The arc captain will sense what you're doing and will shut off the gas if you are running any and speed up the wire speed. When using inner shield flux core wire, you can remove the gas shielding nozzle to judge the wire stick out better. The flux core welding is fiery with its welding sparks, so it can lock up the gas diffuser or accidentally short it out on the piece you are welding, damaging it. I bought some flux core nozzles to insulate and protect mine. There are two styles of the MB15 type MIG gun. This welder ships with the spring type nozzle holder, which I prefer, and here is the threaded type. I have an affiliate link in the description for both to save you trying to find them. So if you click on the link and purchase some for yourself, I will get a small permission, so I will probably buy some more tools or car parts. For the flux core, a lot of people asked if the welders can weld sheet metal for spot welding or panel repairs. I selected synergic mode and cycled through to flux core. I set the voltage to 11 volts. I had the ability to have a plus 3 volts to fine tune the welder to the wire speed. You usually have a minus 3 volts at high voltage level, but this was at its lowest setting. The seam weld turned out pretty good. I didn't even upload the spot weld. Flux core is definitely not suited to spot weld sheet metal this thin. It was painful. I have a 2 inch galvanised T-joint that has been coped and crushed in the vertical position. The sort of stuff you see in a farm. Gasless wire is perfect for welding over galvanising and being a small welder, taking it outside and being able to weld in a bit of wind is very handy. Plus it's a lot faster than stick. Because gasless is straight polarity it penetrates very well going vertical down. I didn't remove any of the galvanising to show the wire's ability to weld over this material but you will notice how I'm keeping my head away from the fumes and the spatter, not only from a health standpoint, but it also extends the clear lens life on the hood. For both of the pipe joints, I welded it in synergic mode at 13.2 volts. If this video has helped you with your question or boredom, can I ask you for five seconds of your time? By hitting the like button, you will make the internet a better place. And because I have a few seconds to fill in, if any welding manufacturers are watching this, stop sending the terrible wire brushes and replace them with some flux score nozzles. For welding on heavier material, I've set up a 3G plate. I used to use flux core a lot for tank building in the gold molding industry, big tanks. Flux core is usually pretty good at putting in a nice full pin root, so that's what I did. This will simulate repairing a crack that you have dug out of a piece of equipment and how using flux core for a root run if you're not the best at doing a root run and vertical up stick. When you are doing a root run like this, a small landing on the prep and a 332nd or 2.4mm gap with a 27 degree bevel angle. I keep the weave to a minimum and let the welder's setting punch through. I'm looking for a keyhole around the arc. After a wire wheel to remove the slag and a quick inspection for any undercut and checking the root runs penetration. The 71T-GS is only designed for a single pass. I will use stick for the rest, vertical for the fill and horizontal for the cap. To select stick, cycle through to MMA, disconnect the pigtail, I have the ground in the negative connector and the stinger in the positive. I set the machine to 85 amps and connect the earth. I'm using 7016 332nd or 2.5mm electrodes for the vertical up so I don't blow through the root run. I can increase the inductance to penetrate even more when I increase the arc length 
the wordle will burn away any undercut and trap slag. A lot of people make train tracks with an angle grinder in between each vertical pass to remove any slag or undercut. The inductance will do this for you once you've had some practice. You can see how I flicked the arc over the piece of spatter to remove it easily. As I'm moving from side to side I'm favouring the right hand side so the left hasn't filled the prep as much. This is so when I'm welding in the 2G horizontal position I have a good landing to prevent any cold roll or an ugly cap. Once the fill run is complete I'll remove any inconsistencies of highs and lows and I'll also tidy up the landing for the next run to make it easier to see. For the 2G cap I use the same type of low hydrogen rod, the 7016, but they are 8th inch or 3.2mm. I have the amperage set to 120 amps. Now I want to have a nice smooth cap with no undercut, so I will be turning the inductance down slightly, allowing each bead to blend into the one below. For the horizontal cap I'm just running a stringer bead as consistent as I can. The camera is in my way so the drag angle is a bit more than what I'd usually want. I am angled down slightly to prevent any overall. The bottom of the weld pool should just cover the plate for a nice profile that I can lay the next two beads over. If you are going to do a lot of stick welding with your multi-process welder, having arc force and adjustable hot start functions makes fine tuning the welder for each rod or position a lot easier. Selecting the appropriate multi-process welder can significantly enhance your welding projects. I can confidently say after 20 years of using various welders that the Art Captain MIG 200 is one of the most simple to use. I said earlier in the video I'd do some pros and cons. I have three for this machine. There's quite a few guys that actually use these in their profession now. And I think this hinge here that's just basically the metal tab off the door goes into the plastic that could break if it's getting loaded and unloaded out of a truck quite frequently. But for the guys at home, I don't see a problem with it. The other thing is the little tension in it that goes on to the hold the wire on. I think that's like pretty thin plastic. I'll replace mine with something I'll make up myself. And the third thing is I wish I had this welder a lot earlier because it is a fantastic machine and I had to try pretty hard to find those two faults. Its compact design does not compromise on functionality. It easily allows for wire spool and drive roller changes. The light situated above the drive roller isn't just for show, it genuinely helps. One standout feature for me is the cooling fan which only activates when necessary, avoiding the persistent and irritating noise of other models. The 60% duty cycle at full amperage capacity means you won't find yourself pausing frequently to let the welder cool down. I like the fact that I can choose manual mode or switch to synergic and even be able to dial in the fine settings as a bonus where I don't have to worry about material thickness. One thing to look at if you're in the market for a multi-process welder is some of the synergic machines don't actually work that well, just enough to be annoying. This machine has the ability to go into the parameters and adjust up to 8 settings in MIG welding. 5 in manual metal arc welding or stick and 3 in TIG welding. A $5,000 welding machine that I use at work that's only 2 months old doesn't have any of these features. And remember if you didn't like this video hit the dislike button twice.